Tori, and today I'm going to be reviewing the book A Little Bit Wicked, Life, Love, and Faith in Stages. This is Kristen Chenoweth's autobiography, and it is written with Joni Rogers. So if you don't know who Kristen Chenoweth is, she is an amazing Broadway performer. She's also done a lot of TV work. I think she's probably most famous for the play Wicked, hence the title, where she played Glinda, the good witch in the Wizard of Oz retelling, and she has such a fun personality. She's this little tiny blonde woman who has the most amazing bubbly personality, and when she sings, she either kind of sounds like this, all high-pitched and squeaky, or she has this gorgeous operatic voice, and she can switch between the two, and it just sounds so amazing. She's been in all kinds of really great Broadway shows and TV shows and movies and so I was really excited to hear all about her life. This book was so much fun to read. If you've ever seen Kristen Chenoweth perform, this book fits her personality so well. It's bubbly and sweet and heartfelt and just so cute and perky and amazing. It has a few recipes for really high calorie foods. It talks all about the different experiences she's had as a performer and how she got to be such a well-known and successful performer. It talks about different people she's met along the way and really fun experiences she's had. And this whole book was just such a delightful, bubbly little treat. So in the center section of the book, there's a whole photo section, and the photos start with her really young, and then they kind of go on, she gets older, you'll see her in um, like high school productions, and then the beginning of her career, you'll see different Broadway shows, there she is in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. They have a few really fun shots of her when she was in Wicked. There's a story in here about when she had a very, very bad hair day, and um, there are pictures of that so you can see what happened to her. So this book came out in 2009. I think it was written sometime in 2008, and it covers basically Kristen Chenoweth's whole career up to that point. It opens on kind of a somber note with um, her getting ready to go to a funeral and that just kind of sets the tone for the whole thing because it starts out at the lowest point where she's feeling discouraged and having a hard time making it through the airport because she's so famous and just kind of starts with her feeling a little sad but then she's always looking on the bright side and then it just kind of goes from there and she's just so bubbly and just always taking the best of what life has to offer and she's just such a positive and fun person. So this covers basically her whole life. It starts when she was a small child, she was adopted, and she talks about how much she loved her parents and how wonderful it was that they adopted her. It kind of briefly skims over her young childhood and then starts talking about her um, being interested in things like theater and dance as a young girl. And then once she gets to college, it starts going really in-depth in all the things she did in her career and all that she was trying to do to become a performer. So I didn't actually know, but Kristen Chenoweth was in the Miss Oklahoma pageant, and it talks about all she did for that, and that the reason she did it was because it was a great way to become a performer, and things like that. And um, just all the hijinks that happened with that and how much fun she had. I loved hearing about her college experience. She studied under a professor named Florence Birdwell, and it sounded like she was just an amazing instructor who taught Kristen Chenoweth so much about singing, and that sounded like so much fun. She talked about how um, she's a very petite, cute little girl, and so she had a hard time convincing the people in charge of casting that she could handle a wide range of things and she wasn't just cute. And so apparently her whole life she had gone by Christy, but for um, her stage name she changed it to Kristen so that people would take her a little bit more seriously. And the book talks about all kinds of really fun stage shows she was in. She was in some new things. She was in revival. She did all different really fun things that just sounded incredible. I loved hearing about the section when she first got to New York and she and her friends were all just crammed together in these little apartments and just barely getting by and running around like crazy going to auditions and working like working so hard and it's just exactly what you picture when you think of the starving artists trying to make it big on Broadway and that was just so much fun to get to see. I thought it was interesting you know the title of the book is a little bit wicked and 
Um, a lot of the chapter names are based on stuff about, like, you know, their plays on things from Wicked. So people very much know that Kristen Chenoweth was in that show and that's what she's famous for. But the book actually doesn't talk about it all that much. There's basically just one chapter on it that just goes over the show a little bit. Apparently there are lots of rumors around that Kristen Chenoweth and Adina Menzel, who was the co-lead of the play, um, didn't get along very well. And so Kristen Chenoweth says, no, they did get along. She was perfectly fine with her, but she definitely doesn't gush about Adina Menzel the way she gushes about other people. So they may have gotten along, but it sounds like they weren't absolutely best friends. She talks a lot about her love life and different relationships she's had and just has very good insights about all that kind of thing. It's really fun to hear just kind of her personal journey and things like that. And there was this hilarious anecdote about um, her having to travel somewhere on this little tiny airplane that she was terrified of and the whole thing just sounded hilarious. I was really glad that um, Kristen Chenoweth got someone to write this with her because, you know, Kristen has so much personality and stuff and it's just so amazing and the writer helped her convey that really well. This whole book is just full of these fun little quirky anecdotes about these different situations she's gotten herself into and there are a few that have a lot of heart and a lot that are just so funny and hilarious to picture. And so when this book was being written, um, Kristen Chenoweth was in the show Pushing Daisies, which I saw some of way back when it came out, and it was actually a really cute show. It was a very kind of over-the-top, um, quirky show about a man who could bring people back to life, and um, Kristen Chenoweth played a character named Olive, who was also very quirky and over-the-top, and so she spends a lot of this book gushing about that show, and that's kind of bittersweet because I feel like right after, like right as this book was getting published is when the show got cancelled. It didn't last hardly any time once this book was on the shelves and I feel so bad about that because she put so much into that show and it was a really fun show and it's too bad it didn't last longer. So I learned a lot about Kristen Chenoweth from this book. I had no idea how many different shows she was in. She's been in some amazing parts and it's fun to see. She's had some very serious roles and some very funny roles and she has quite a wide range as an actress and it was a lot of fun to get to know more about her and her life and just her general path to stardom. So this book was a lot of fun, and if you are a fan of Kristen Chenoweth or want to know more about an amazing actress, I really recommend that you pick it up.